minutes, I'm going to open the meeting, 632. I'd like to look at the agenda that was distributed. Thank you, Brent. I'd like to add some uh, items, and then I'll take comments from other people who also want to add items. Under 3.5, going after the minutes, we need to approve uh, Paco's pay for his work he's done the past month. And then after Paco's update, <clears throat> we make it 4.5, would be Capital FAR mutual aid system. We want to talk about helping them out with their legal fees to get their organization all straight with the Secretary of State. And that's all I have to add. Uh, oh, application. Um, yes, application uh, for the earmark with Sanders and Leahy. Thought we'd talk about that uh, after Paco's update. Uh, four point, actually four point, be four is Paco's update. 4.1 would be the application. 4.2 would be Capital FAR mutual aid legal fees. I'll do that better, Brent Householder, so it's less confusing for you next time. I'll start using those points. Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. Anyone else would like to add, modify the agenda in any way? All I'm right. going to be amended as suggested by consent. Well, I'm going to say without objections, it's amended. All right. Okay. Any public comment? Okay. Minutes of April 22nd were sent out by Brent Householder. I we entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So also moved. Moved. I'll second then. So that was Doug Hoyt that made the motion? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure. I, I was looking down, so I didn't see who spoke. And yeah, Sally, who seconded. Discussion about the minutes. Sally seconded, but I yes. will also. I'm sorry, Kim. I'll second them. I thought Sally had. No, she did. I said any other further comments. Oh, OK. All right. All in favor of approving the, the minutes as received, say aye. Aye. Wave aye. your hand if you like. <laughs> Any opposition? Great. I want you to know, uh, Brent actually <laughs> did like five pages of minutes and I trimmed it down. And I'm really encouraging him and myself, all of us, to realize that minutes are about what we do, not about who said what. And I want to keep moving us in that direction. So they're, they're really about what they should be about, who you follow Robert's rules of order. They're about motions and go in that direction. So if people really want the nitty gritty, they have to attend. <laughs> we'll give them motivation. Donna, Thank I, you. I have one piece of business I just want to mention. Uh, um, do you have a piece of business that you'd like to assert? And where would that be? Oh, it's going to take three minutes. You want to put it under other business? Well, it involves a check of almost $6,000. I already put Paco's pay in there. No, this is a separate check. OK. $6,000? $5,800. OK, well, um, I'm, OK, we'll put it uh, right after Paco's. How's that? Oh, OK. Uh, I do apologize. I realize I did not send out his invoice. Uh, he had sent, Paco had sent the invoice to Kim and Kim had forwarded to me. I did print it out, but that didn't help any of you. Uh, what it was, unfortunately, uh, Chris didn't get the payment done for Paco's previous month's service that was $1,250, and then this month's service was $1,750. We owe him a total of $3,000. The invoice that we need approval of today is $1,750. The other one had been approved at a previous meeting. 
entertained a motion to pay Paco. I'm so move. All second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Any opposition? Similarly, raise your hand, say nay. Motion passed. Paco's going to get paid. Good. I don't see him. He thought he was going to make it tonight, um, but we'll just skip right directly to Kim's addition of the $5,800. What's that about, Kim? Donna, it's a payment by the city of Montpelier, which I think is our last payment, 5875 It's made out to CBPSA and myself. And you should talk, call Kristen and straighten that out. So you okay, came to I'm, my I'm home. It came to I'm my sorry. home address. So okay, I'm, my my Wi-Fi is a little unstable tonight. I must have a lot of neighbors on. I don't know. Could you you got something from the city of Montpelier, but I didn't hear the rest. Five thousand eight hundred and seventy-five dollars, which I think is its last obligation this fiscal year, and it was made out to the authority and to me. I will endorse it and return it to the police department for Bev Hill, but I think Certainly. you should. You should talk to Kristen and uh, yes, make okay. sure that it gets sent to the correct address. Yes, we have a lot of address changes. Um, but uh, thank you. Chris is out this, this week, but she'll be back in. Try okay. to interface with her. But I will <laughs> let her know. But please just endorse it, and it can get deposited. You can let it off at the police station. I'll do that. OK. Um, this might be a good time to let everybody know that we now have a post office box that's official. Post office box 634, Montpelier, Vermont. 05601 is the zip. So whoever is chair, we've got at least a mailbox. <laughs> and uh, I'll be changing the, the bank and uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. I think those are the two primary and, and some other places that we have some expenditures relationship with. But we also have a phone number. Uh, thanks to Stephen Whitaker's suggestion, I went on and found it. It was easy to do, a Google voicemail box. And so we have a number, it's 802-828-7482. It'll be posted on the website. Brent has started that, we're still working together uh, some things need to be removed. I have put a call into Internity Web to try to get a meeting from a couple questions that Brent came into, but that's looking much better. Uh, people, you probably still owe Brent your bios. Now he did uh, some, uh, I would say creative writing about bios and you may wanna read them, go online and read them and see if you want to leave what's there or make any changes or corrections, but it'd be really helpful if you could get that into Brent by the end of next week. Do it over the weekend. Think, have it done by Monday. How does this phone number work? Does anybody answer it or is it just- uh, You get a voicemail. So okay. you leave a message. It goes directly to whatever phone you put in, which is mine right now. <clears throat> but my number is behind the scene. So you can change it at any time and forward it to any phone number you want. OK. But it's just a way to have a constant number instead of changing it by people moving in and out of offices. Good idea. Paco's here. Oh, Paco, we'll come back to you. We did we did pass your pay. You're finally going to get some some green stuff from us. Sorry about the confusion of your previous check. Madam Chair. Oh, that's OK. Can, can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim, Jim has a question before you start, Paco. Sure. Uh, Jim? Yeah, on, on the bios, uh, I, for some reason, interpreted that as the bio was one document and the our individual plans were another, but then I started thinking that maybe I had that wrong. Do you want our, our individual goals, I should say, in part, as part of the bio, or is that a separate doc, a separate entity? 
One of the goals we, we were hoping that we're going to have time to talk a bit about, so I wasn't really so much looking as a document. I, I did send as an attachment with one of the last emails I did as secretary um, that sort of asked you for a few brief facts about your background, sh share why you want to serve on the CBPSA board, what benefits you think the Public Safety Authority has, and I've asked for 125 words or less. Okay. I, I'll resend that out. It's a good reminder. That's fine. I, I just, for some reason, was thinking it was two separate. Okay. 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 Taco, did you come prepared to do a bit of an update? I did. I, 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 I did, and, and I will. I have to apologize. My internet connection has been terrible uh, ever since this afternoon, and so I've been juggling trying to figure something out. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry for the delay. Yeah, mine's wobbly, too, so. Yeah, so uh, I, I believe you're looking for an update on Televate's, uh, the project, right? Yes, it might be just well, two sentences. Well, uh, it's it's going to be uh, short because Rick at the last meeting gave a very comprehensive overview. And the only thing I have to report this evening is that uh, of the electronic surveys we've sent out, 15 have been returned. I don't know which departments or which individuals uh, that includes, but regardless, uh, 15 of them have been uh, returned. Um, I know Televate has been working with Joe and producing some uh, updated propagation studies. Uh, he's also produced some maps for Joe that shows uh, the status quo, or I mean the status of propagations within the existing system. Um, that's, that is not, I, I don't believe, ready to be handed out at this point. Uh, but perhaps, perhaps the, uh, the, the biggest issue is the upcoming site visit. Uh, Dom Curry is arriving Monday. Uh, I guess his plane gets into Burlington in the afternoon. Uh, so he, we do not have anything planned as yet for Monday, but we are hoping to try to arrange some meeting with the hospital staff. Um, I know Joe, Joe sent out an email to a variety of people. Uh, pr prior to today, I was somewhat dealing with their the director of security, Mike Wolf, in terms of providing, hopefully providing an introduction, uh, and I did, of him to Televate, but that didn't, um, didn't materialize. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not hearing back from anybody on Joe's email this morning. I reached out to Tom Galanka uh, this afternoon, uh, kind of rekindled um, our old relationship, but also uh, he was kind of chuckling that we're still at it. So uh, he was going to reach out to the CEO, uh, Ann Noonan, I guess, to try to find out who on her staff uh, we can talk to at the hospital and, and hopefully use his leverage to get a meeting uh, with Dom um, and the hospital staff uh, Monday afternoon. Tuesday will, will be spent on tower site visits, and Wednesday will be uh, a tour of the dispatch centers, and Dom will be leaving some uh, Did he cut out on everybody or just me? He cut out on me. Okay, so uh, Don plans to meet with dispatchers on Wednesday morning. And one is a uh, Carrie who's replacing Fred, as well as one uh, dispatcher in Barry. Joe's got a question. Thank you, Joe. Dad, so on Wednesday, um, we plan to meet in Montpelier. Uh, Dom wanted to tour uh, that facility, and on just after that, we'll go over to Barry and uh, tour that facility. He wanted just to talk, chat with the dispatchers there. I let uh, Chief Pete know and uh, uh, Deputy Chief Eastman and Chief Bombardier, and they're aware of it. So 
we are working through that right now. I I was hoping to do a uh, just a end all meeting with Dom and Paco just to make sure all his questions were answered before he left. That's great, Joe. Really, I appreciate how proactive you've been and that you're going to do the towers uh, tour with him. Yeah, Very I went up, to, went up to one tower today and I'm going to have to get a UTV to get up there. Oh, wow. But the other tower, we should be able to no, no problem. And then Woodbury should not be a problem either. Good, good. Well, I know I'm curious, so take pictures, I'm, you know. And then he, uh, I'm sure he'll be taking some too and pointing out different elements to us. Uh, the one thing I would like for the board to be involved in is we thought we, we'd take him to dinner on Tuesday night as a board and anyone who wants to can join us. Uh, Sarducci has put up their tent as well as indoor space eating so that people could be comfortable. Uh, if you want to attend, I just need to know. It'd be helpful to know. Uh, Tuesday noon, it, by Tuesday noon, if you were going to go, certainly you can let me know sooner. If people are just thinking about it next Tuesday, what, seven o'clock, what's a good time? How many would be interested in having dinner with Don? 6.30. 6.30? Is that all right for people traveling further? Okay. Nobody besides Kim, uh, Dan, is your hand up? Okay. Sure, I'll, I'll probably, I can probably go. All right, you can confirm it later. I just like to get an idea. Um, Doug Hoyt, Doug Brent. Okay. Um, Doug Brent, you're more than, uh, I mean, you're invited too, if you'd like to join the board with his dinner with him. Uh, I'll let you know for sure, Donna. Okay, okay. Donna, I'd like to attend that myself, but I'm not sure I'm, I have Tuesday night free, so I'll have to check. Okay, okay, check. All righty. Hey, Donna, Donna. Yes. I, I certainly apologize for that. I really don't know what's happening with my system or the internet here. It's really bizarre. I'm, I haven't had this problem before. If I could just finish, I was uh, just about ready to wrap up. And, and, uh, By all means. Dom, Dom will be leaving Wednesday uh, afternoon, uh, but the important point is we are coming to a period of time with this project where all of the information gathering will, will, will be completed, I think, by the end of next week, uh, unless there are any clarifying issues that Televate will need. In talking to Rick, uh, he's going to begin the drafting of his report uh after next week so my message is that the whole project is moving moving right along um and i and i i guess i'll editorialize a little bit I, I think they've been doing a very comprehensive job um and i will also add that in their in their uh, viewing of the dispatch centers on wednesday morning they intend to speak to other uh, some additional dispatchers as well i know uh Carrie McCool in Montpelier has had some communication with Dom and uh, he's already, he's visiting Montpelier, I think starting uh, at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. So that's pretty much it for my update on the Televate project. Um, I, I didn't know if Joe wanted to add anything with regards to the site, tower site visits, or maybe he has when I, when I he went did. dark. But when you were gone, he, he, he filled us in. Great. Good. Thanks, Joe. You always got my back. All right, buddy. No problem. <laughs> I have one question for uh, Paco. Uh, Go ahead. Have you have you told uh, Caroline Earl that the dispatchers, her clients, will be uh, spoken to by the evaluator? I think she uh, should be included if she wants to be. Yeah, the the answer to that is sort of yes. Uh, Carolyn, after the last meeting, had reached out to uh, uh, myself saying I hope that she had hoped the dispatchers were going to be interviewed and that she could help and make sure that happened. And I passed her along to Rick Burke. And Rick and her had some exchange with emails 
And beyond that, uh, I, I don't know where uh, it, it really uh, uh, rested. I, I know in talking to Rick, I made it perfectly clear that uh, um, dispatcher's involvement was also a responsibility of the agency heads and that they would have to be included. But um, I guess, Kim, we tried to make that connection with Carolyn and uh, dispatchers and Telepate. Yeah, I think her focus was definitely the dispatchers and I'm sure they'll let her know if indeed she wants to attend. But I can send her a short email just from me to her and ask to make sure. Sure, sure. Can, can the dispatchers uh, be interviewed out of the presence of the agency heads? Yeah. I would hope so. Um, I will Doc, send I, can I ask a question here? Uh, yes, Stephen. Yeah, uh, Paco, did you did y'all uh, elevate uh, meet with Chief Romai of the Capitol Police? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on uh, that update? Any questions for Paco? Okay. Now I'd like to go into the application. As you all gotten emails about it last minute, we got an opportunity to submit an application for what they call a congressional delegated <laughs> funds and earmark. And both Senator Leahy and Sanders are giving us an opportunity. Sanders is due this Saturday on the 15th. Leahy is due on the 21st next Friday. And I've been really thrilled that Paco has been willing to jump right in and a lot of other people we've contacted, including Televet, to help us do this. The idea is that we know right at the gate that Joe and Doug Brent have put so much time in working on proposals that they've taken the simulcast, the consoles for Barry and Montpelier, and what I call the built-in structure for Barry and Montpelier, it's that connection and made a huge proposal. Um, and I, I think it's also an RFP and I'll have them talk about it, but that's sort of our base. And then on that, we talked to Televet to add what they see as other equipment and staffing that we need a project manager and we also need to deal with governance. Mm -hmm. And we could look for some money through that to really use our expertise and our relationship with Televet to help us with governance, cost allocation, and put in a place within the earmark application that we would actually use them to assist us to fine tune any RFPs we would send out and be the project manager over any implementation of the money we received. That especially not having any staff would be really important within the application that we can show expertise of managing the money and they would provide us with that. So, I mean, that's sort of the gist. Apaco, you want to add more to what we're looking at for the application? And then I would love for uh, Doug Brent and Joe to talk about their uh, proposals. The only thing that I, I would want to add is that in large part, this discussion uh, around applying for these earmarks should be about how best to move forward. Uh, you know, the cities and Capital Fire have done a lot of work on their, their communication needs. They have uh, some, some ideas uh, around moving forward, uh, but it's really got to be a, a collective decision as to who best is positioned to apply for uh, this, these monies. Um, and it's, if it's CVPSA, then CVPSA needs the support of its member communities to, to move forward. And I know Donna has been working on that, and I, I just don't want to assume that everybody is on board without having a discussion about it and, and hearing it from the members' mouths. Yes, thank you. That key to this is that we really want a group decision, group participation. Um, the idea is to move forward to get the equipment our first responders need and, and to also make whatever it looks like, public safety authority, some regional entity that can work for people. 
And that's why to me, it's important that we have a governance piece within this application and that we do our due diligence to get a governance membership cost allocation that people, people, all the entities feel comfortable with and can make it work. I'm not married as to keeping Central Vermont Public Safety Authority as it is at all. And so I really, not only this application, but all the steps that would make the application really be successful implementation would only come from a collective unit that can work together. So I did talk to Bill Frazier. He said, great, go ahead. We would take your money. <laughs> we will use any equipment that you get from this. We will work with you. He had no hesitation. Unfortunately, uh, Steve McKenzie was in a lot of meetings. I left messages, but we haven't connected. Um, and I sent Paul an email for Capital FAR, and I haven't heard back from him. But meanwhile, everybody here can share their opinions and whether they would support us in approaching their, the head of their entity that they're here today representing. So um, Doug Brent, Joe, one of you want to talk? I'll let the chief go and I will jump in as needed. How's that? Can you hear me now, Donna? Yes. Hey, great, great. Um, first of all, I want to correct something that you said. We did not put together a proposal. We gathered up all the projects that are reportedly going on in the area to include a Barry Montpelier um, type of radio project to help our inner city areas. Um, and they talk out of from buildings. We put together the uh, added the dispatch consoles that Montpelier wanted to put in, and Barry has tried to jump on that same band, same same bandwagon to um, get some economies of scale for purchasing, and then um, also added in uh, after meeting with Paul Sher uh, Paul um, Cerruti the. Um, uh, project that the mutual aid system wanted to do. So there's like three project, major projects going on, all having to do with radio communications, all having to do with fire and EMS um, for this area. And we just kind of put those all together to try and figure out what we had. And if we had some buying power because of that, there has been no proposal put together. There has been no bids put out, anything like that. Just trying to get an idea what was going on. We, um, like you, didn't know anything about these things coming along from Sanders or from Leahy's office. So our um, completion time, if you will, to try and get this stuff together was kind of timed out with when we got what we got from uh, the Televate report because hopefully that'll either shed some light on different things that we need to look for. Hopefully, maybe it would even validate what we th thought we should be doing. Um, so there's a number of different things that we've looked at there. And uh, that's kind of what we've been working on. As you know, and you spoke of earlier, Joe has been working um, tirelessly with trying to make sure that Televate um, gets the information that they need. Um, as we all know, reports are made up like garbage in, garbage out. So it's important to make sure to get good information to them. So those guys that are the professionals can evaluate that stuff as best they can and give us really, really good information. I think it's gonna be important going forward, whoever we get money from, whether it's a federal agency, whether it's a state agency or whatever, to have that third party report um, from Televate to show that we've, not only come up with what we think we need, but we've got an outside agency um, that validated that and, and agrees with us and, and for the reasons why that we, we need to do that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm the fire chief here in Barrie. I want the best equipment for my personnel that we can possibly get as quick. I, I want it yesterday, um, but we know that's not possible, but for the whole area, we need to update this stuff. You think about the fact that Pat Leahy got this money for Capital Fire Mutual Aid, 1989, 1990-ish, that equipment is old. Um, we could only hope as, as a group of people here that the equipment that we buy, wherever we get the money from, lasts as long as the equipment has that we got when Pat Leahy bought it for us the last time, because chances are it won't. Um, if you've ever heard of technological obsolescence, that's yeah. what's going on these days. So, um, uh, again, Joe and I will work to make sure that 
um, our manager who puts us up and backs us to do the work that we do for you, for us, um, that he comes on board just like, um, like uh, Mr. Frazier has in Montpelier. I suspect that he will. I'm sure there's going to be a, a city council um, component to that, but with these darn short uh, windows of opportunity that get presented to us, trying to get something warned and get on a meeting and make a presentation so they even know what you're talking about, takes so much time that uh, it doesn't sound like we got, we certainly haven't got it for Bernie's request. And we'll be pushing it to find uh, that we have it for, um, for what Pat's looking for. But regardless, I'm sure in concept, it will be supported by our administration. Great. Well, I mean, you have heard a lot of praise about the information you have gathered uh, on the three projects that have been floating around. And that um, would be very useful indeed if Mackenzie says, yes, go ahead and share that. That would really strengthen our information. Sanders doesn't ask for as much detail as Leahy, um, but what we put in now, again, is just the beginning. There'd be more asked for later. So that's no, no. also why it makes it a little more doable, particularly Sanders is much, much simpler than Leahy's and Leahy is simpler than it will be. The next stage will be more complex. Donna, I have a question. Uh, yes, Kim. Are you sure the Sanders date is Saturday? I, I thought it was Friday the last time I looked at the flyer. I thought it's 15th. I have it printed here. That's Saturday. Well, whatever we can, Check it, but I was. Yep. Yep. Yes, what? Uh, we'll check it. Yeah. Yep. But um, somebody has to do some writing uh, tomorrow. Yes. And I've talked with Paco about doing some drafts. Um, well, actually, he's already started one, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, in talking to Paco about time and how what the cost would be he feels there's hours unused he estimates to be unused within his current contract and about 40 hours that he he doesn't see him, him using in the televet study that we could apply to this and so i would really want the board to think about that and give the approval <laughs> for him to spend time on the application both applications well uh, okay uh, All right. I, was, uh, I just look, looked up the date. It is uh, uh, May 14th at 6 p.m. Yeah, I just turned to that page, too, when Kim was talking. I saw I got the 15th in my brain. Um, yeah, it's Friday, 6, 6 p.m. So is Paco going to take the lead on the draft? Uh, and yeah. Send it? And that's and, why we asked people in the email that went with the minutes that people think about uh, that I sent out with the, his draft application. I sent out an email to think about what you would add to it and give input to Paco, comments, suggestions. Yeah. Okay, I think the uh, committee, um, which at present is you, I, and Doug should review the draft and help him with it as much as possible because it's, it's going to be a struggle to get this ready by six o'clock tomorrow. Um, Paco, how do you feel about that? Well, uh, it may be it may be a struggle. Um, I, I, I am looking at it from a, a macro view. That is, I'm looking at the Sanders application as being a, a high level uh, conceptual grant proposal. Um, it, the the keys in my mind are going to be to adequately identify and articulate the problem such that uh, we capture somebody's attention. Uh, I think that uh, the other issue is to identify our solutions to fit in with uh, some of the federal guidelines. Uh, those solutions have to include uh, discussion of interoperability needs. It has to include uh, uh, P25 radio standards. It needs to include uh, a reliance 
or a, a support and build of broadband uh, needs to include, uh, I think, some uh, redundancy and backup issues, backhaul perhaps. Uh, and then we need to articulate the uh, budget, um, the, con the concept. And that's where I'm hoping to work with uh, Doug, Brent, and Joe on the uh, they're, they're, they're the budgets they put together, which is basically, I think, a, a very high level uh, uh, discussion of the component parts of this project. Those component parts are the capital fire uh, simulcast solution, the uh, in building or the dual city uh, solution, and the radio consoles. The radio consoles actually are I think an important part of this project because it's going to include uh, radio consoles for both Montpelier and Barry City, and I think we can we can make a good case for uh, that's a huge step for interoperability issues. Um, so, um, and, and all the things that you've said, as well as the three projects already being outlined previously. Televet felt very strongly that they could endorse that and they were willing to give us quotes that we could use referring to the upcoming study as them as experts. Um, they very much agreed with what's being done so far and that we need to go further and really look at our deficits and that our goal is to be that P25 standard everywhere. And this is gonna give us a big leap there. And they also included governance in that discussion. And they used the public safety standard of starting with governance. So that's something public safety is very much comfortable with that kind of terminology and approach. I th to get back to Kim's point, do I think that there's obstacles in uh, putting these, these earmarks together? I, I think there's huge obstacles in putting them together. Um, I, from what research I've done thus far, I'm not sure that there are really any federal funding sources, agencies that will support uh, land mobile radio. Um, um. Yeah, we're, the project is not an easy fit into the accounts, the federal accounts that, that, with, that are attached to Leahy's grant. Sanders doesn't mention that, but Leahy does. Have and we may other. have bad odds, but I feel like if we do it now, whatever we gain, and if we don't get it in, it'll put us in a better position down the road. Yeah. One other point I'd like to make. This doesn't involve any, the governance issue that I see does not involve any seeding of personnel by any agency to any other agency. Nope. So, so that problem we don't need to deal with maybe five, six years from now, but not right away. And uh, so it's strictly governance of who's going to own the system, who's going to maintain it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, who's going to pay for it is kind of what the plan is. Yep, yep. Governance and cost allocation. Who's on the board? Don, when, when your board's through, I'd like to speak to this. Okay, any other comments among board members? I'll no. just... Tally? Um, just briefly, um, Capital Fire Mutual Aid, I know, Donna, you had said something about um, sending a letter of support, and we certainly would be willing to do that. I know that the timeline is very short, but um, if there's a letter to be signed, we certainly would do that. Okay. Um, Paco presented some bullet points that I was going to use to send out sort of as a formatted letter that then people can adjust as they want, sending a little different format to each of the entities that are doing support letters. So they don't all look alike, but, but they have key, key elements in them. Okay. Great. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Jim. <clears throat> I just want to plant a seed. Um, I'd like to see if this is going to be a grand plan and we're going to go for the sky first. I would certainly like to see included in it, um, at least keeping our foot in the door to ultimately down the road, be able to monitor fire ground channels. Um, there's a lot of anecdotal stories of 
um, Bridgeport, Connecticut had double line of duty death. When Paco said we want to catch someone's eye, that's one that catches their eye. Two firefighters died because dispatch, they were actually monitoring five now and they didn't hear it. Uh, they weren't listening. And two people died because of that. That's, that's, that's good stuff from the catching people's attention, although it was very tragic. Um, it turns out that I had some discussions recently in the last few days, some emails and, and Joe um, and I kind of got together and brainstormed a little bit, but it kind of turns out it's not as difficult and as expensive as, as it might seem to put it on this whole system. Um, because you don't need to repeat the five round. You only need to be able to have dispatch here, uh, the portables and the portables only need to be able to, uh, talk within the range of a fire ground. So you don't need the repeater system. And Joe came up with this idea, or at least suggested it's worth looking at. The existing radio system, 155190, could be switched over to be a fire ground channel and everything is in place for dispatch to listen to that channel. They would select a tower at the beginning of an incident and that's the only time they have to switch. Now they're selecting towers in between conversations, but at the beginning of a fire, they'd select a tower and it's already in place. So I would, I don't know if there have to be some revision to it, but I would certainly like to keep that in the, the discussion. Um, <clears throat> and I also have um, some studies, research, and, and uh, certainly a lot of examples of where um, other parts of the country have said this was essential to have fire ground monitoring. Is that something you could write out and send to Paco? Yeah, sure. I could uh, do that the sooner the better. Yeah. And All what right. was the term you called it? I, what am I called what? The, the system. The fire ground monitoring? Biogram? Fire ground. It's the conversation between firefighters on radio, land and mobile on the fire ground, but if dispatch is listening to it, yep. but one, they can jump in and pick up unacknowledged transmissions or, or repeat, yep. relay and, and answer uh, and, and actually give um, um, instructions or, or orders to responding apparatus. But the biggest reason for it is that if a firefighter has a half a second to, to yell a mayday and no one hears it, that may have been his only chance of being rescued. And there's a number of examples around the country um, where they yeah, weren't hurt. I understand hurt. how it works. I just wasn't hearing the term right, sorry. Okay. Yeah, fire ground That's monitoring great. is the gen, you know, <clears throat> general term for it. Well, if you could send what you have, it sounds like you have a lot of information. That'd be great. I would be happy to do that. Paco, I tried to send it to you and I had the wrong email. <laughs> Donna, I, I'm, I'm sorry again. It's, I've never had this problem before, but I just wanted to finish. I think I cut out on a saying that there's a lot of obstacles. I was, going to finish the, I was going to finish my statement that says, well, there may be a lot of obstacles. You can't play ball if you're not in the ballpark. So, uh, you know, uh, if, if we don't submit anything, then we know we're not going to get anything. So we might as well submit something and go on record as having a project in central Vermont and uh, advocate strongly for funding. That was my message. Yeah, and get on their radar. I mean, they can tell us what, what was wrong with it and what we need to do. I mean, then we have a relationship going. So I would entertain a motion that we go ahead and do the application to both Sanders and Leahy as best we can with the information we can gather in the short time we have. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Brent, did you get both of those? Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, I'm still waiting. I'm s sorry, Stephen, did you want to say something? Yes, I did. Um, okay. I still do. Uh, I think that it's important to recognize that the Televate uh, needs assessment was kind of a phase one and it was anticipated that following a phase one needs assessment would be an engineer design i know some members of the board have mentioned the uh or a member of the board has mentioned 
uh, the analysis of potential costs or benefits of uh, a trunk system uh, and whether that's compatible with or an add-on to a simulcast system. And so what I want to point out is that we might want to, you, you as applicants might want to consider a different approach for the Sanders earmark, which does uh, uh, also these aren't grants. These are earmarked appropriations. So I, it's important to refer to them as that. Um, yeah, they're appro direct appropriations from Congress and, and earmarked for this project. But it could be that phase two of the, of the engineering design for the system, and that's where all of the details of backup and redundancy and failure modes, you know, multi-site failure modes, I understand, are not being done in this analysis. So it may be that the Leahy deadline is, what, a month further out? A week. Or is two weeks further out? One uh, week. We're, I see, one week. So I guess my point is, depending on how flexible, uh, we also don't have it discussed whether or not uh, Central Vermont could end up with a PSAP out of this. And so I would suggest that we uh, make part of the approach not anchored to things that have not yet been uh, completely engineered, but yet allow ask for the money to build them regardless, but um, not commit to things that we haven't yet figured out is that the best overall in the long run. Uh, a good example was the fire ground monitoring that uh, Jim just brought up. Um, but the trunk radio system and the PSAP and uh, Paco mentioned uh, mobile broadband. Uh, mobile broadband analysis and even implementation of filling uh, areas with small cells uh, will get attention. It, that is that is desirable. That's what they've been fun since putting billions into for FirstNet. And we have the ability to infill areas where FirstNet isn't going to cover using small cells that will uh, support mobile wireless and fixed wireless to help students and telemedicine patients. So. Those are things that would definitely catch the attention of the congressional staffers that are going to review this, because that is the kind of demonstration of integrated planning that I know that they have been wrestling with. So uh, asking for money to complete an engineered design in, as phase one, and then to implement the design, even if we don't have all the details of the implementation yet decided, might be the smartest approach, um, but okay. definitely don't leave out any any options that we still might want to add later because that will not be to our advantage. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else before we make the vote? All in favor of approving the motion to make these applications of earmarks, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it passes unanimously, wonderful. Next on the agenda was also about the Capital Farm Mutual Aid. We've heard um, that there are some shortfalls in the organization having all their paperwork done as it should be within the Secretary of State. There may be some other uh, outstanding paperwork that I don't know, but I'd be a really positive and important step, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, to offer some funds to help pay for the legal fees to get their paperwork in order. And I would, you know, like to, I don't know, Dan, if you have any idea what, how much paperwork there is uh, at all that's, that's required or what the cost range was, but I thought we could make like an allocation of a, up to a certain amount and uh, at least help them out on it. Well, obviously, it depends on the the attorney and the but you know for any type of incorporation, you're talking about putting together a, a set of uh, bylaws and an article. Um, if it's a if it's a municipal entity, um, you know, essentially making um, the filings with the state. 
I think we've, I, you know, you had thrown out Donna, the idea of $4,000. I think that's a reasonable amount of money. Um, it probably won't cover it all. It depends on how, you know, if we're talking about sort of an off the shelf boilerplate set of um, articles and, and bylaws to sort of straighten out and, and or if there's existing bylaws, there's existing paperwork, and it's just a matter of making sure everything's effectively uh, and properly filed. I think 4,000 should probably cover a lot. It would certainly make a substantial dent into it. Um, I'd go as high as uh, five or six, but um, I, I think that's a fair range. Uh, Sally, do you have any input on this or inside knowledge of what you have and what's needed? I honestly do not. I don't know. Joe might have a better idea of where this, I mean, I, I know there's bylaws and, and stuff for- I thought you had bylaws. Um, Donna? Uh, yes, Kim? Um, there was a, another situation in Rutland where the papers didn't get filed. And the process is that you apply to the fire marshal you give him your articles and if he files a petition and if that gets approved, then it has to go to the attorney general for approval because the attorney general supervises creation of new municipalities in the state to make sure that everybody knows what's happening. And that does require Articles of Association and new bylaws. Um, I think there is an additional step that's separate from this, but the whole governance issue, which I can talk about when we get to the uh, individual reports. But the governance issue, as I outlined in my memo, can be very complicated because the governance of uh, CFMAS may not be complicated, but its relationship to uh, CVPSA is. Somehow, if they have roughly 30,000 population and the cities of Barry and Montpelier have 10,000 each, and we're going to own a common system. There has to be some recognition of the population served. Uh, Kim, I'm just going to interrupt you here because I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of what the governance should be versus no. the process of how we start to discuss the governance and no, change. I, I, I agree with you, Donna. It's a complex subject. I'm just saying yeah. that. Uh, both CVPSA and CFMAS could probably use some legal help in doing that. Yeah, and that's why the cost is there. Uh, Joe had his hand up. Well, I've been in. I've been uh, appointed the front person for Capital Fire to work with the Secretary of State. We've been assigned a person that is dedicated to straighten this out, um, in conjunction with the Attorney General's office. They are working on this right now. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, uh, in conjunction with our lawyer and them, they are seeing that this was a mistake at the Secretary of State's level, not at Capitol Fires. And they are trying to work it through between them and the Attorney General's office. They said that they will make this right. So we are in the process waiting for them to finish their investigation and vetting. About every other week, I get emails of update, which I keep Skip and Paul in the loop in and our, and our lawyer. And so until the state comes back to me and says, this is what needs to be done. They told us that they will make this right, that they are looking that this was a mistake way back on uh, when one of the grants was applied for and we had changed our nonprofit status. And that's about all I can go into it right now. So okay, we are on okay. top of it and we're working through it. Do you have some costs associated with that, Joe? 
I, I do not right now. They had not told us anything. Um, here, okay, Dan. I, yeah, I, I mean, here, here's what I'd offer, and, and maybe this is similar, um, is that it, it sounds like the Secretary of State and the AG's office may be, um, there may be some uh, uh, repayment to uh, CV uh, to the uh, to the mutual aid fire society from you know for their legal fees created by the mistake of the secretary of state's office. In which case we wouldn't necessarily want to intervene, but maybe what we can offer, and I would support this, is is something where after after the dust settles, if if see uh, if the the mutual aid fire society has some um, expense that went unpaid, we may be able to help with that. And and at that point in time, you know, it's almost like uh, victims of defalcation. The bar association offers a certain fund after insurance and everything else has has attempted to repay them. If there's anything else left, we 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 swoop in and and maybe that's what we would just simply offer to uh, to them and to be determined. And, you know, I, I don't think we necessarily need to commit to a certain number or specifics, yeah. but just, you know, I mean, I think the discussion here is that there's a certain range that we're comfortable with um, and see how it plays out. And, um, and then they can always come back and ask for money if, if there's additional things that fall beyond the Secretary of State's issue um, that we may be able to assist with. Uh, sounds really good, the Secretary of State, Attorney General taking it on and owning it. Uh, but yes, um, that sounds good to me. Anybody else? That you, that I want you to see us as a resource and we want to support you in this. And... So is the motion that we would entertain, what, once the costs are known, we would entertain uh, CVPSA would help to reimburse uh, costs once we know what the numbers are. So I don't know that we need a motion as long as they know our intent at this yeah. point. And, and actually, I'd recommend that we don't make a motion because we don't want to commit to a pot of money because if Secretary of State or AG is is, is out there and they're like, well, you're going to get 6000 from CVPSA, that's 6000 <laughs> less we have to, to front. I, I think what okay. we're willing to do is to sort of help help make you whole, yep. but they, the AG and the Secretary of State should step up to the plate first. Okay, that satisfies me. Yep, yep, so we're incognito, but we're there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, finally, the round table. Uh, I'm asking people uh, to- Donna, were yes? you gonna talk about the point-to-point um, the -point assessment? I had that. I I really didn't list it, uh, but I'm glad you brought it up. I'm going to put it under under other business on the agenda. The next thing is roundtable. Okay. So I'd like to get to that, even if it's more shorter than our initially. If people could even just take a two minutes or less and, and say just one or two goals that they would like to achieve in the new year that starts July one for us, I would like to hear it. And you can volunteer or I can choose you. <laughs> Who'd like to go first? Okay, well, Kim, I'm going to time you. <laughs> well, I sent you all a memo April 17th on my thoughts. And basically, what we have to determine for the future is who's going to own the new system, who's going to pay for it, and who's going to maintain it. And... Uh, when I began working for the state of Vermont back in the 60s, I worked on union school governance issues, but I've gotten a little rusty in the 50 years since, and they're complicated, but I can foresee various systems which um, CFMAS could own this and have representation not only and proportion, but we'd also have to come up with cost issues. I think those are very complicated. And 
I think we should think about engaging legal counsel to help us with that. And I don't know who's up on all that when I read the newspapers on union schools, for example, in the Valley, certain towns have combined, say three towns and they get one vote. And I think the uh, CFMAS could do the same thing just off the top of my head. If we had two groups of seven towns each and gave them each two representatives, they'd be populated, uh, they'd get proportionate representation. I'm not offering that as a solution. I'm just saying there's a lot of creative work that can be done that will have to be done. And I'd like to get some really professional help in doing that. And I don't know if Dan has any idea of Okay, we're not we're not coming into solutions. We're just bringing up what your goals are. I'm sorry, I'm going okay. to confine you, Kim. And so I hear your goal as a real concern on the governance issue, the voting, the cost, that that's really important and that you see us needing outside resources to do that. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be brutal about the time because I want to hear everybody and we put this off a couple meetings now. Who's next? Dan? Okay. Um, no, I, I, I'll be brief in that, um, you know, I think this is a very interesting point for CVPSA and for Central Vermont Dispatch Services in that, um, you know, I it, it certainly feels like this Televate um, uh, report is the first step in, in trying to figure out what, what a unified dispatch service looks like. And so I, I guess my goal is to make sure that we get through this first phase um, and then we take that report and really start to plan out a, a second phase. And I'm excited to think, um, you know, because I, I, I think this is one of those great regional models um, in that I think there'll be some tension to re reinvent the wheel and just create something that is entirely shared um, but I think there's, we also have to look at what we have um, and sometimes existing systems turn into regional systems and, and there's a path forward on that, um, both of which are, are workable, um, but you know, require a certain amount of buy-in and planning. So I'm looking forward to those parts. Okay, thank you. Jim? <laughs> um. I guess my overriding thing is to um, use CB, <clears throat> CBPSA to advance um, the regional approach to a whole litany of, of services and not just fire police and EMS um, and dispatch there. I mean, there's a lot of regional things uh, that can be done in fire service that um, I think this structure could be utilized to do that. Um, training comes to mind and a regional training approach is, is a very beneficial thing because re training is caught is very expensive to bring in experts to do the training and so forth. It all becomes very small scale when it's done on the local level. Um, but <clears throat> the, the larger issue for me is, is to try to um, help the board realize that, that the, um, Fire, the scope of the fire dispatching that we do in Vermont is very different than a lot of other places in the country. And that there is so much more that, that dispatch could be participating in that really helps the fire departments on the, in, in the field. And we, we seem to have a very narrow scope of what um, fire dispatching is. And, and what's interesting, I'll say this quickly, the departments that are the largest seem to have the most proactive and, and um, active fire dispatching. And to a certain extent, they're the ones that need it the least. When we show up on scene with three people, having a fourth person helping coordinate some of the organization in the first 15 minutes of a fire is huge. You know, deciding where staging location is, deciding who's going to be on the, <clears throat> what department's going to have the RIT team. Um, I had some conversations with, um, Chief Pete, and he's from Chicago, they have terrific fire dispatching. I mean, they're, they're assigning different 
all the different chiefs that get assigned on a particular job. You know, there's just a lot of area that we haven't really been exposed to that much up here. So I guess my my primary goal is to get the board as well as a lot of the people in the services to recognize that that the role that dispatch can play can have a huge effect on on the organizational and the the effectiveness of the fire operations and the safety of the firefighters so i'll leave it at that but i think that's something that i'd like to focus on so beyond advancing regional services and then particularly training the other part i got was to educate the board better about understanding the more expansive role of the dispatcher is that accurate yeah i, w I wouldn't choose the the word educate because I think that's a little presumptuous. Well, I'm no, sorry. I mean, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just scared. I don't I mean, want to say I'm going to educate I mean, anyone. Because you've talked I, a lot about operational issues, so I think it's at the heart of your passion. So help. Yeah. You can send me words in your own. I mean, you can send your own yeah. words. I'm totally. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, I, I was just being facetious. I know. Because I, I wanted to use the word education, and I said, now nah, that sounds kind of pompous. So. Okay, well, we do every once in a while. What the heck? All right, thank you, Jim. Okay, uh, Brent, Sally, who I pick on next? I'll go. Okay. Um, so coming coming from a completely outside perspective here, you know, I, I, I don't have any experience in, in public safety services, but I will say that, you know, this has been quite a learning experience for me. Um, and, and it really uh, kind of brings to light, you know, how much people depend on the services that fire and police uh, provide. But at the same time, uh, not a lot of people knows what goes into providing those services. A lot of people just take for granted that they're going to be, they pick up the phone and dial 911 and the fire or the police just show up at your house uh, or wherever they're needed for that matter. Um, and so for me, it's, re I really think that, you know, as we get this Televate study and as we learn more about how to move forward, you know, it is a very, it is a very exciting time. Um, but I do think, you know, while we're trying to formulate as a group what to do, I think it's going to be beneficial uh, to have, you know, more of the public figure out why these things are needed and do yep. this community outreach. I mean, yep. and, and not just, I know we've mentioned it at previous meetings about reaching out to some of the select boards and, and you know, with the city councils. Um, but I also think that also becoming more visible to the community at large, um, yep. where we, you know, where a lot of people don't know when they pick up a phone what actually goes into what technology and what uh, resources are needed to provide the services that you know we, we they we we use every day um so i think that's you know in terms of me i think a personal goal for me is to kind of learn more about this and learn more you know more of the intricacies um as we move forward but also um i think doing a lot of community outreach is definitely uh, something that i think is really important moving forward I did write down what you said, but I have to share an idea because you were talking about it. I was just thinking of opening our website with some really fabulous statistics, data, question that would challenge all of us, but public especially, that would charge him with an interest of learning more about what you talked about. So we, we can tie that in with the website, website too. That's cool. Thank you. Okay, Sally, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so some of mine, I would echo what Brent said. I think a lot of people don't realize what goes into dispatching, what has to happen behind the scenes. Um, I feel like right now we're actually in the last month or so, I like we're really kind of working together, Capital Fire and um, CVPSA in a positive direction. Um, and really my goal is for us to do whatever we can to improve um, the safety and the reliability of the communication system. But I mm -hmm. do think that um, educating the public as to exactly the importance of it and really what does go on behind the scenes will help with the support from the communities. Great, thank you. Very distinct. All right, we have visitors. Anybody wanna share? Joe, Doug Brent? Did we miss uh, Chief Hoyt? Uh, Stephen, I'm sorry, I forgot you. You can have your two minutes. 
No, did we? Did, did Chief Hoyt share his goals, or did he about jump off? No, we're talking about just very specifically for the next year. Focus. No, I know. I'm just saying. I didn't hear Hoyt, another board member. Oh, Doug Hoyt, and he let me get away with it. Oh, how could I miss you, Doug? I'm sorry. Thank you, Stephen. You're up. Uh, I think this is going to be like music to Jim, Jim Ward's ears. I'm going to, I'm going to think a little further down the road. Uh, one of my goals is to, would be to play off of the work that, uh, you know, Doug Brent, Joe and others have done in terms of getting these, um, issues to the forefront, getting them to the, uh, stage that we're talking about in terms of doing a earmark uh, request and things like that. But from my perspective, uh, having dealt with dispatchers for, for many years, primarily in the police fire services, is that for them to do the job that they're most capable of doing in terms of directing people to uh, multiple locations, seemingly at multiple times, a full-fledged, fully working CAD system that mm -hmm. would assist them to provide these services. Um, when they're sitting there in the dispatch center and they're overwhelmed with all the phone calls and all the calls that are coming from people that are responding and everything else, it's really good to know what piece of equipment is out there. How far away is it? And how soon can we get it to where it needs to get to? And to do that, a full-fledged, fully working CAD system can be a truly lifesaver. Um, so, and I realize that's down the road a little bit, but if all the other things that we got talking here about uh, come to fruition, then in my mind, and I could be wrong because it wouldn't be the first time, it would be a really a godsend for doing that stuff. Falls in line with what Sally is saying. A lot of people don't really don't know what the what the dispatchers are doing, and and maybe it's not important that they know exactly what the dispatchers are doing, but. It'd be nice to know that the dispatchers can um, direct the people and the equipment to where it is needed the most. And on a regional basis, that would be ideal. Awesome. You know, that hasn't come up for a while, but it makes me re remember going back to Regent Lakes or Lake Region no. dispatch. Lake Region. Lake Re I mean, awesome. And we should get all the board members who haven't been there should go. It, it's it's just awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad you brought that one up. Donna, could I just piggyback something on what the chief said? <clears throat> a CAD system is essential to be part of it. Uh, and, and I don't see that as down the road. If we're going to do anything raising technology, the CAD system would be part of it. Not just a record retention system, a real CAD system that they know where their resources are. Yeah. And the other point that is equally essential, and Chief Pete said this uh, in an email to me that if you don't have the sufficient personnel, it doesn't matter what they can listen to. If they don't have time to do it, they need to have sufficient personnel to assume the additional responsibilities. And I, if I just add in here, Don, I'd make a, a distinction between a, a records management system, an RMS, and a CAD system, a CAD. Right. Um, they, they have to be hand in glove, glove in hand, however you want to look at it. Right, records and equipment. Okay. Um, now it's 746. We have a couple more things to do. So I didn't call on anyone, but I'll, I'm willing to give everybody a, a minute who hasn't spoken. If you like to add anything, Joe, Doug Brent, Stephen, Joe, I'd like to just like take 30 seconds and the board, the board is starting to crawl at this point. 
I, I have had the unique vantage point of seeing it from the initial steps to now. And I think as it re-envisions itself, I think there's some critical uh, decisions that have to be made as a whole, not just by the board, but by communities. And, and uh, I think it's essential to, to remain to crawl first before you stand up and walk and then walk first before you run as long as where everybody is doing it and right if you if you went from crawling to running you tend to convolute issues and i i urge the board to continue to go on a slow steady pace we have an opportunity here to really change the way dispatching is done in central vermont and and really modernize it but I think we really need to be methodical and do it correctly, but also have to be mindful of the final price tag. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's huge. And we can go for the Cadillac, but we may end up with uh, the Taurus. So I just, I, I, I have a unique look into this with cheap rent, knowing some of the prices and yeah, I mean, the catalog's nice. We may not be able to have the gold faucets at first, but we did design the system to be able to mature to that level. I think that'll be effective. I'll leave it good, at that. Good point, good point. Anyone else? Okay. Um, in next step on the agenda is reviewing committees. And I would just like um, to spend not much time on this as we don't have much left either. But initially we had talked about having the committee that dealt with the Televake contract, the charter, the website and outreach. That Kim was gonna be chair of the Televake contract, that Jim was gonna do the charter, Brent was gonna do the website, Doug, with also assistance from Sally on outreach. Is that still good for people as far as chairs? It's fine with me. Okay, I, I did give Jim a heads up. Um, I really wanna see the charter being more broad based uh, in talking with Televet and others that I really feel there is a structure I shouldn't say structure, there's an entity we have called Central Vermont Public Safety Authority. We can make major changes to its existing charter just by changing board membership and total, totally change the organization. I mean, what if all the boards were chiefs, fire chiefs, police chiefs, city managers, and then maybe two or three public in it, uh, persons. Uh, if we really looked at it as a way to say, okay, how do we change some of the voting layouts if we change the membership of the board within the charter itself? So I'm just throwing that out there because then if we start with the charter, we're sort of reacting to something and putting things in instead of trying to look at governance all new again. So I'm asking the charter committee to take a much broader look as well as some of the what I call housekeeping we need to do within the charter between now and December and really make some decisions about what we might put before the legislators. And part of this discussion, definitely Televet would be part of, we would be hoping that actually on the governance issue, particularly that they might take the lead on it. Uh, they're giving me some numbers of cost. If we got the earmark, it'd be part of that. Um, and if not, then we might have to go looking for some funds, but uh, I think it'd be really important to have a neutral party lead that, even though the committee would be there governing, they would govern them the way the Televet contract committee governs that work. And so I, what's that sound like to people? Just trying to get a different look of how to approach and reform the entity of Central Vermont Public Safety Authority to become something that our members can really relate to. Uh, Jim and then Kim. Yeah, I have to say, um, I was kind of taken back by your email, um, only because I didn't anticipate the scope that you were talking about. I was of the impression that we were um, looking to do some housekeeping uh, and a 
couple of tweaks, uh, some problematic areas in, in the, uh, <clears throat> you know, in, in the uh, bylaws of the charter. Um, and, and when I read it through, I didn't see anything that struck me as being earth shattering. On the other hand, if you or if the, the board desires to totally revamp the whole thing, I, I uh, and, and maybe even maybe it needs to be revamped, go in a different direction. I, I guess I would like to see some kind of consensus of what, where did they want to get to? Um, you just mentioned something I had not given any thought to whatsoever. But there should be public safety positions on this board. I agree with that. The chiefs, the you know, someone that's at least involved in the in the uh, in the field. Um, you know, we could very easily have a board here that had, no one had any field experience. Um, and that's not to say there isn't a very critical place for regular citizens as well. But but there needs to. I see that as being valuable. That's what you're talking about. Although I hadn't considered that at all before. So I, I have to rethink it a little bit in terms of my available time and whatever, but it, it sounded like from your email, you wanted to do a complete rewrite and I wasn't totally prepared for that. Well, I'm just, again, I'm trying to think out of the box, Jim, that doesn't mean you, you don't, tomorrow you start meeting. I mean, there's a dozen things I would change in the charter that you might call nitty gritty, but they're really substantial like from when our organizing meeting, when our annual meeting, all sorts of dates that don't flow with our activities at all that need to be changed. Um, so that can be on your agenda and you may say, great, but if the board decides to go this way, then I don't necessarily wanna handle it. But the discussion of governance can be like its own committee because I really feel the governance needs the fire chiefs around the table all the fire chiefs, as many as we can get, and town uh, city managers, that we really have a broad discussion of what it takes for them to feel comfortable and have faith and trust in an organization mm. that they'll be well represented in. And then if they have that discussion and they make a proposal to the board, then the board might say, okay, well, let's try to do this as a charter change. And maybe it's this year, maybe it's next year. I don't know, but I'm just trying to think differently about it. That I I, I, understand, I agree with what you just said, that governance in the large scope of things is slightly different than a charter committee. A charter committee is kind of tweaking things, I thought. The governance, redirection or redesigning of the governance is, is, a, is a big, big ticket item. Um, yeah, but it's so, stated in, within the charter, that's where our governance is. The charter- well, I recognize, No, I recognize that, but in terms of, concepts um yeah. you know where, where we want to go with it is is something that i would like to see the the board uh give general areas that they think are a problem they don't think representation is is adequate right now for from different you know interest groups then that would be something we'd look at but if they think the board's fine the way it is then maybe we'd look at something different but anyway i'm just saying that that i was a little taken back by the scope of what you were thinking no, it's a new idea. I'm, I may do that to everybody time to time. You know, I feel sometimes <laughs> it, it may be half baked, but it can open up another thought that then takes us somewhere. Um, I, mean, I think an advisory board is something that could be also, there could be an advisory committee that the public safety departments put together for us or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. That's just another idea well, to throw on. Okay, if we pull the governance out outside the charter for now and just leave the charter with the more regular things we've been thinking of, would the board support like a round table uh, that we're meeting with the fire chiefs and city managers and start seeing what they feel is needed for the governance? Is the board comfortable with that? Donna? Yep. Um. My half-formed thoughts about this would be to amend the charter to allow the board with the consent of its member um, legislative bodies to reorganize the uh, board membership. This is, what I'm saying is that the process is very, cumbersome. It has to go to the legislature. It has to be 
voted on by the towns before that happens, and then it has to be approved by the governor. And I wonder if we could give the authority with certain uh, safeguards. Uh, I'm the, sorry, Kim, you're getting into details of charter change. Um, well, so uh, how would you approach it? How would you want us to approach it? That you'd be I, on a committee and give this input? Well, I'm certainly willing to be on a committee. I'm just suggesting that if we could give the board, give some internal process to do this, because it's going to be a lot of negotiation, a lot of talk, which is necessary and should be welcome, but it's going to take time. And I'd like to find a way to do it that, because if we miss this session of the legislature, it'll be another year before we can even talk about it. Well, That's if we actually got money, got the earmark and the money was there, Televet said between now and January, they felt it could be done. Well, we don't need to change the charter to uh, do that. To actually look at governance and have the stakeholders and meet and sort of read. Well, that may, that may require a charter change, absolutely. Yeah. But just in case people don't realize having been with the original beginning of the committee that then became the actual, before it was an official Central Vermont Public Safety Authority Committee, the intention of having the cities appoint, the assumption was that they would point somebody from the public services and they didn't and they choose not to. And so it's been very hard because on one hand, we sought for years opinions of the chiefs but the chiefs were never there to vote on something and then follow through with it. They just would share an opinion to sort of go away, come back, share an opinion, and often it changed. So for some reason, the cities just didn't do that. And maybe because it, it's not like Lake Region, it doesn't have all chiefs, maybe that was the issue. Um, but I just feel governance needs to be talked about really solidly with the people who have the most issue being a member of a public safety authorities. Like, why aren't you a member? Well, there's these issues. Well, let's get them out on the table, talk about them. Can we resolve them? If the board's not interested in that, I mean, I've just heard governance forever as being an issue. Oh, I'm certainly willing to talk about it. I think it needs to be talked about. Well, where are other people at? Well, if I can offer, I mean, I, I think going back to Jim's comments, um, you know, if we think about, if we think about what you're proposing with this, this governance change, it, it is a little bit outside of a review of the charter and sort of looking to update and modernize the charter and, and you know, go through that, that kind of review. You're talking about a much more fundamental shift where the charter would kind of follow from that, um, which is, you know, trying to reach out to the stakeholders and saying, um, you know, and it becomes a little bit of a chicken, egg, cart, horse kind of dilemma, which is, I, I, I think if the, you know, and maybe this goes to Joe's comments as well as, you know, it, right now, I think what the problem was, there are two problems is that there getting chiefs to be on this, the, the, this board. I, I know I've talked with Bill Frazier, for example, and he's, he's pushed back on that idea in part because of a feeling of conflict of interest. And, you know, we can agree or disagree about that perception, um, but that's gonna be out there a lot. But, but I think the other issue is that we wanna make sure that there's, we're, we're, we're starting to walk and we're starting to take on responsibility because I think then you will see people coming to this or chiefs, you know, coming because it becomes important because of the work we're doing and the, the sort of representation follows the work. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I think that follows that work follows the outreach and part of what we're doing is I think we're, we're building or rebuilding, you know, our relationships with these various municipal groups. We're trying to chart out a vision for what CVS, CVPSA does and can do and wants to do, you know, so that we don't get ahead of ourselves and suddenly say we're, we're CVPSA and we've come to take your dispatch. 
Um, but we do come in and offer these benefits such as, you know, legal um, reimbursement, which I think is, it was a great idea. Um, or, you know, this Televate study and we start to become the central clearinghouse and we start to build um, some of the structures that then, you know, we can work with these various things. And then I think suddenly you ha start to have some of these governance issues solving themselves. Um, because the work follows, the governance follows the work. And that right now, you know, I think we're, that's, that's at least my sense. I'll, may, I'll park it there. Well, I mean, one thing that would come up quickly if we got any kind of major capital grant, then it always comes down to the equipment, where does it sit? And so that's why trying to at least start some governance discussion now to get ready for that. Um, yes. Someone else, Sally, Grant, Doug Hoyt, Paco, anybody? And you can just think about it, but if you want to share some thoughts now, okay. So I, I'm asking the charter then right now, Jim, just to look, you know, look at the, your small scope of, of looking at that. And I have a, several items to give you that some are in the minutes, but I'll actually write them all out for you by chapter and name them for you. Um, but I'd be hoping that you'd actually, all of you would have your committees meet at least once before our next meeting. And if you have difficulties with a Zoom meeting, I can loan you mine, I can set up the meeting and give you access to it so you can pay host. Or if you have another teleconferencing, um, feature that you can use, but that we would need to, to post the committee meetings, advertise them, make sure people know about them, and have the option to join the remote meeting. And I can be in more communication with each of you one-on-one. -on -one. Are there members who would like to say right now, I wanna work on the charter, or I wanna work on outreach? So we can actually tell them who their committee members are. Yes, Dan. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to work with Kim on the Televate committee. Okay. I'm willing to be uh, a resource to the charter. Um, I've given a lot of thought to this both okay. presently and during my career. Um, so I'd be happy to work with you on that, Jim. We're good. Um, Sally, you're still good outreach. I mean, you can do more. I mean, you can small board, <laughs> you know, more than one committee. Uh, uh, Doug Hoyt, outreach, and you had been on the Televet contract. Right? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh... I'm still good with the outreach and um, I can certainly uh, slide over and do Televate stuff um, as needed. Okay. Uh, website, Brent and I, uh, we haven't spent the money yet, but we are gonna be having needing some time of uh, Eternity Web on some subtle changes, um, but Others could join us on the website. Okay. Um, I'll write these out Donna, and you can include Donna, can committee members in your, in your minutes. Uh, yes, Stephen? Uh, I think I would ask that uh, the website committee and or this whole board, uh, being that Capital Fire doesn't have a website and this appears to be the beginning of kind of a collaboration, it might be wise to uh, kind of fill that role for them as well. Um, it, either a merged website or two sister websites that could help the public clear, clarify who's doing what for whom. And uh, and there's a lot of deep history. I've, I've been researching this for quite a while and there's, you know, a good 30, 40 years of history that would be useful uh, to inform everybody that would be who belongs on a website. 
So just an idea. Well, we can have uh, Sally pass it on and, and see if there's interest there and what that might look like, if it would be something useful, helpful. And we might actually think about other links. I mean, when you mentioned that, I realized there are probably other places we could also, simple links even to the, to the cities and uh, yes. Okay, other business, pinpoint. Did I totally confuse you? <laughs> Maybe everyone else knew about this and not me, that uh, there are these apps on the phone. And this is a particular program that Televate has developed. I found out today that you can't use an iPhone on it. It only can be an Android smartphone. And that people could just have that app and everywhere they go for that month, it's collecting data on what carriers have reception where they are. And the idea is ultimately you get to map out your whole area where the dead spots are, where the live spots are, where Verizon is, where AT&T, whatever. Mobile, I think we have T-Mobile now these days. Donna, I think uh, I, if I'm not correct, it, it, you would require a separate phone on each network to get that kind of mapping. Um, yes, sir. No, you, each carrier of, of the phone, what it is, we have an account, you get 20 volunteers, their phone number goes into the system and it is their carrier that you're mapping. So hopefully with our volunteers, we would get some that have Verizon, some that have AT&T, and maybe, I don't know, T-Mobile, I don't know all the ones that are here, but um, it, it is their, you're right, it is the phone's carrier that you're picking up on. And it's a free app we can use for three months. And on every month you get a report what they found. So we would know if there's some spots we have nobody driving through. So you can either do it as just your regular routine. Plus you might add a few additional roads to your um, drive just to hit some spots we don't normally travel. But the idea is to end up getting a pretty good map of what your real network is versus what your provider tells you. <laughs> uh, uh, I've been I've been, bit writing about and suggesting this for over a year now. And the, one of the problems of having volunteers do it is that when you're, if you're going to be measuring data throughput, you're going to quickly uh, hit the, uh, the bricks, uh, the limits on data that people have typically have on their phone above you know, so many gigabytes. And so it really almost takes a, a special account, phone account with an unlimited, like never throttled uh, data in order to accomplish this. So it might be something that's worth putting into the uh, earmark funding and do it to do it right. Last time the state contracted for this type of service, uh, it was in 2013. And doing the whole state at that time was three hundred and something thousand dollars. You could extrapolate down what Washington County would be uh, to have it professionally well, done. But we have this opportunity to do it for three months now, um, and they've only given us to us because we're a current client. I, I tried to. Yeah, I just I'm warning you that the, it, we if we we may not be able to get the data throughput measurements if we if we use up all the volunteers phone data allowance is what I'm cautioning. I understand, I understand. I, I Somehow Rick didn't feel that was an issue, but uh, I'll try to get parameters from him so that people who volunteer can look at their phones and see. Uh, anyone else here knows about Pinpoint? Steve, that's uh, Jim, sorry, Jim. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I have a clarification question. Is this collecting data for an individual's um, Dead it's areas or so forth, or is it going to be put into an I, aggregate? I would compare as you drive through and there's waves going through for uh, any kind of cellular carriers network. And this particular app is a special program that then collects that data of, oh, I drove through Elm Street and I picked up Verizon. And then when I went all the way out to Worcester, I lost it here and here and I picked it up here. So that well, my when question is, is What's the end game? Is it for the benefit the of the game is individual? That data, 
gets downloaded, wait, wait, you end up with a map. Just for a second. Is, is it for the individual to know where their dead areas are, or are they going to do an aggregate and hold it, have the, all 20 put on one map? Yes, it's all one account. It's all one map. So it feeds in. Yep. The, the data the data collected, uh, which is signal strength, location, uh, data throughput, uh, on a very cellular level, is uploaded next time you get to Wi-Fi. Uh, it, it's automatically uploaded to Televate server. And there are privacy implications to it, depending on who gets access to the data of how long you spent, you know, at the bar before you went to the fire. But you, uh, those can be, those aren't insurmountable. Uh, if, but if you actually go it, to, that's to the way it works. Televet.com slash pinpoint, you can see more narrative, but you can see some of the maps that ended up with that kind of input. Um, they usually do it by county when they uh, do it. Uh, when you pay for it yourself, it's $3,000 a month. So I thought it was worth um, looking at. If there's no interest, then, you know, it's going to hard to be get volunteers. Well, Donna, I think it, for long range planning, which would include uh, broadband connections, um, you know, for data transmission, mm -hmm. sending EKGs to the hospital, for example. Yep. 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 Um, that would be vital information to have. Yeah. Uh, Joe, would you think that's not helpful information? I think knowledge is power. And I think any, if you can find the volunteers to do it, I think great. Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're crawling pretty good right now. And the more knowledge we have, we can push forward. So. Well, I mean, if you actually ask some of your firefighters to say, hey, would you would you have your phone be one of the devices? Do you think we could get a couple of volunteers? I think that we're, we, I would take it back to Capitol Fire. And I think you're going to be more beneficial to the more rural departments to get an accurate mapping than you were to have city firefighters do it. Well, other than your city firefighters don't all live in Barrie. Uh, for the most part, they live oh, locally. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. So Donna, can I offer a suggestion here? What to do next? Quick, yes. Okay, uh, I think this is a good project for CVPSA to provide the backend support services. There's some, some maps. Uh, you'll need printed maps for those volunteers to check off the roads they've already driven and hopefully they'll finish an entire town before they uh, hand the, the pin license off to another towns. Um, well, I actually mentioned that to Rick that I thought we'd have to divide up the area, assign roads, but he, he had a much informal attitude. Did you not think that Paco, that he was just saying having people who just lived in different areas have it on that that would take care of, of most of the roads and by getting a report at the end of the month we would know what was missing and then we might have to assign roads is that what you heard yeah he, he made it sound very simple and he made it sound like uh all you've got to do is give a phone to somebody or have them use their phone and drive around and uh, the download automatically records uh where the person's been and the signal, the cellular signal strength of the locations they've traveled. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know enough about it to uh, to to say whether that's correct or not. But what I do know is, in the original RFP, uh, that cellular drive testing component was in the RFP. Yes, it was also thought to be important enough. So that in the Televate contract, uh, we added it uh, not in the original the scope of work, but in a potential uh, additional scope of work that they were to bid on. And instead of bidding on it, they are offering uh, this service for free nationally to 20 entities to uh, uh, utilize and record the cellular coverage that they have in their communities. So 
you know, the, the, the devil, to Steve's point, I suppose the devil is in further exploring the, the specific details. But in my mind, it's also about finding the uh, rural towns volunteers from the fire departments to go out and conduct this. So it's, it's less important to the cities as it is to the capital fire mutual aid towns. So we really, we really need capital fire support or at least the, their member their their members support. Okay, so uh, Sally, I'll send more information. I believe Paul was on that list, and you were. They got the the first you know shout out. But I'll be in touch with you and Paul and see what we can do to at least reach out and see if we can get people to be uh, open to having the app on their phone. Yes, Just in their um, daily routine. There's a mutual aid meeting this coming Wednesday night. So I would think if we could get it figured out before then, that would probably okay. be good. Okay, this Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Uh, Paco, Paco, are you able to get some questions answered about data ownership and privacy uh, protections prior to next Wednesday in order to get uh, kind of a, a one pager together for, for CFMAS members? Uh, I suppose I can, uh, we can reach out to. Um, yeah, because the 10-year ten, ten telecom plan is now out for draft review and whether or not we're going to pursue a neutral host infill model where all carriers are carried on the cells, it would be important that we not uh, have Televate leak this data out the back door to one or the other carriers to give them to prejudice uh, an RFP response. Well, he thinks all public safety should have this, so they would instantly know where their uh, reception is when they need it. Uh, oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that for, for AT&T and Verizon to know where their, each other's dead zones are uh, might, might uh, color uh, an RFP response that the state is talking about putting out. What are you so saying? So you might want to... I'm sorry. I'll talk to you about it separately, Paco. Okay. What, what he's saying, Donna, is that Televate could uh, turn around and sell the data to a competitor. Uh, yeah, I hear him. Create an unfair uh, advantage. Right. Uh, uh, there's a, I think his name was Josh. But anyway, I got an email from somebody one step removed from Don on the pinpoint. And I'll ask him about that. Donna or Paco, could the, I wonder if we can get the Android phones from AT&T through FirstNet so that we could get five or six phones that um, are key to a particular uh, service and hand them out so people don't have to use their personal phones and worry about uh, their I don't data. Know. That another, another level of complication. <laughs> the idea uh, of, of course, I'm also, I'm also uh, reminded that uh, uh, the state, the Department of Public Service provides uh, this opportunity for free as well. And well, maybe uh, they have the phones. I think they did have the phones, but well, that would, that yeah. would help a lot. And who was that? I'm sorry, Paco, who provides that? Uh, uh, Corey, Corey, Corey Chase. Corey Chase uh, with the Department of Public Service. He's the one that did the uh, state's drive testing uh, a couple of years ago or a year ago, whenever it was. Is that yeah, he did it or did they do it just once? They did a partial drive test of about 800 miles or something, or 6,000 miles, but they did not complete the state, especially the back roads, um, and it was a one-time. They have, they have uh, if you go to the State Department of Public Services website, you can see that information on, on, on there. Okay, so uh, we've gone over our time, apologize. Uh, just a head nod, any objections of me working with Capital Farm Mutual Aid to see if they're volunteers. We can get 20 devices, monthly reports, and it'll even let us change the devices, which is not normally true, so that we could get 
other people to do it the second month. So it isn't asking 20 volunteers to do it for three months. Jim, Jim, I saw your hand. <laughs> Household wave, I got it. <laughs> so uh, yes, it's okay that I contact and try to work this with Capital Far Mutual Aid or no? I think that's fine. I'm glad I you're doing it. I just thumbs up, just sort of a general consensus. Okay, other people are indifferent. Fine. All righty. Anything else to come before the board before we adjourn? If not, oh, Jim, you're you're muted. I had a quick thought. Would would the board um, object to or, or encourage me to send the studies that I have to um, put on the website so other people outside of our board could look at them. There's some videos. There's you know a number of different things. I'm not exactly sure which ones I'll send you, but if you're looking for material for the website, I've got a documentary film on on uh, video on um, the whole dispatch line of duty death thing in Bridgeport, which is which is very. Why um, don't you hold that thought? That's a wonderful resource. Until we get the website a little more restructured, but uh, that's great. Uh, we're just not ready for it today. Okay. But that's that's good to know. It's great. Okay, if nothing else. No objections. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a good Bye. week. See you all later.